Hello, so if everyone can please turn to page 13 in the unit four packet, we're gonna be talking about solving linear systems with three variables. Okay, so on page 13, if you take a look at number 26, see how we have three variables? We have X, Y, and Z. What we're gonna do is we are going to determine which values of X, Y, and Z we could substitute in so that all three of these equations hold true. Okay, so these are kind of a long problem. That's why you get the entire page to do it. I'm gonna kind of move this up to give myself a little bit more room. Now, the first thing I'd like you to do is I'd like you to label your equations A, B, and C. It is super important to keep everything organized because you'll see in a minute there's gonna be a lot going on on this paper. Okay, so A, B, and C. All right, and then most of these problems we do in five steps. Some of them you do in less. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna label each step so we could you know, follow an order. Whoever is grading your paper um, can see exactly what you did where. And if you make a mistake, you know exactly in what order you did everything. So let's first label step one. Okay, now in step one, what you're going to do is you're going to line up any two of these equations and you want to try to get one of the variables to cancel out when you combine like terms. So for example, um, let's look at the z's. See here how letter uh, equation C has a positive z? And I'm just going to use equation A. See how equation A has a negative z? If I were to line up equation A and equation C and combine my like terms, I can get the z's to cancel off. And that's my goal in step one. Step one, you want to line up two of the equations and try to get one of the variables to cancel out. Okay, again, so step number one, you're going to you're gonna line up two of the equations and make sure you put down in front of each equation which one you were using. So I used equation A, and I wrote it, and I used equation C, and I wrote it. And now I'm just going to combine my like terms. So when I combine my like terms, 2x plus 1x is 3x. 3y plus 4y would give me 7y positive 7y, and then we'll notice, look here, positive and negative z cancel, and that's what we wanted to happen. We're trying to eliminate one of the variables. And then when I add the right side of the equation, 5 plus 12 equals 17. So now I created a new equation here, and because I created a new equation that I'm going to be using in a little bit, we're going to give that a new letter. I'm going to label that letter D. I just go alphabetically, right? A, B, C, D. Okay, so step one is done. Now, step two. In step two, what you want to do is you want to go back to those original equations and you want to pick a different pair of equations to line up. Okay, so I'm going to use, I again, like if you look at equation B and equation C, again, look at this, the Z's would cancel off. So I'm going to this time line up equation B and equation C. That way, the Z's nicely cancel out for us. Okay. So if you notice, I again, I said which equation I was using. I put it in front of it, right? I put a B with a circle around it. And the reason I circle it is because we have a lot of variables going on. I don't want it to blend in with the variables we already have. So I wrote equation B. Underneath it, I lined up equation C. And now I'm just going to combine my like terms. So when I combine my like terms, 4x plus 1x is 5x. Negative 1y plus 4y is positive 3y. And again, my z's cancel. And then I'm going to bring down the equals. And negative 1 plus 12 is positive 11. Okay, one thing that I want to point out. Whichever variable you cancel off in step one, right? We said we're canceling off the z's. You have to cancel off that same exact variable in step two. Okay, so in step one and in step two, we are canceling off the same variable. Sometimes they don't so nicely cancel off for us like this one, but that's okay. You're going to see in a minute what we can do if the variables don't cancel off. But let's put a note of this in our paper, on our page, because it's super important. Okay, so if you can write this at the top, you know, this, the page, the problem, you must eliminate the same variable in steps one and two. If you eliminate the z's in step one, don't try to eliminate the x's or the y's in step two. Okay, so you have to eliminate, I'm gonna highlight that, eliminate the same variable, okay, in steps one and two. That's super important. Okay, one thing I just wanna make a note of, you know in step one when we 
created a new equation in terms of two variables and we labeled it D. We'll look at this in step two. We created a new equation, which we're going to be using in a minute in terms of two variables, right? We have to give that a label too. If you create an equation that you may need to use in a future step, just label it. So this is equation E. So, so far we have equations A, B, C, D, and E. Okay, let me give myself a little more room. Now, in step three, in step three, what we're going to do is we're going to use those two equations that we made in step one and two. Okay, in step three, we are going to use equations D and E, and that's why we labeled them. Okay, so in step three, you're using equations D and E, the two new equations that you created. Now, I'm sure you may be noticing that if we line up equation D with equation E, look at this, the X's don't cancel and the Y's don't cancel, but that's okay. You are allowed to multiply an equation by whatever you want. As long as whatever you multiply the left-hand side of the equation by, you multiply the right-hand side of the equation by the same thing. So we can multiply one or both of these equations by whatever we want in order to get one of the variables to cancel out. All right, so let's just say, it doesn't matter whether you get the x's or the y's to cancel. Let's just say we want to get the x's to cancel off. See how this is a 3x and this is a 5x? If we can multiply those equations in order to get one of them to say, let's say, positive 15x and the other to say negative 15x, then, you know, those x terms will cancel off. So let's think about it. Let's say we want this term to say positive 15x. I would have to multiply this equation by 5 because this isn't 5 times 3x, 5x, 15x, I'm sorry. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the 5 in front of my d. And if I want to get this term to say negative 15x, isn't 5x times negative 3, negative 15? So I'm going to put a negative 3 in front of this e. Okay, now you have two different options. Option number one. Okay, so option number one is to put the 5 in front of equation d and show that you're distributing this 5 to all three terms and then rewriting it over here. And then do the same thing with equation e. You could put a negative 3 in front of the equation and show that you're distributing and rewrite it over here and then just combine your like terms. Okay. If you don't think that's necessary to write all that out, then you don't have to. You can just basically do, neg do 5 times 3x to give you 15x. You could just write it and then do 5 times 7y to give you 35y. And then do 5 times 17 to give you 85. So you can either write the 5, put the 5 in front of the parentheses, and show you're distributing. Or if you put the 5 here, you could just, I, I take my finger, I do 5 times 3x is 15x. 5 times 7y is 35y. And 5 times 17 is 85. So you do what you feel comfortable doing. Okay, so then for equation A, negative 3, we're multiplying equation E by negative 3. So negative 3 times 5x is negative 15x. Negative 3 times 9, I'm sorry, times 3y is negative 9y. And notice I'm actually dragging my finger to make sure I distribute. So negative 3 times 3y is negative 9y. And then I could bring down my equals. And negative 3 times 11 is negative 33. So again, you choose which way you like better. You could write it all out and show you're distributing. Or you can just distribute by hand and write the answers. I personally prefer this way because I feel like there's a lot going on with these problems and to add more work and more steps onto the paper sometimes gets a little confusing. Mm -hmm. So I like it this way, but it's your personal preference. You do whatever you like. Okay, so now when we combine these two equations, the first two terms cancel and then combine your like terms. 35y minus 9y is 26y And then uh, 85 minus 33 is 52. And look at this. 
we now have an equation. Let me just move this up a little. We now have an equation where we have just one variable in it. We have just y in it. So we could solve this equation. Okay, if we want to solve for y, just divide both sides by 26. And we wind up getting y equals 2. So we have solved for our first variable. Usually, but usually, once we get to step 3, you've solved for your first variable. And then in step four, we'll solve for the second. And in step five, we'll solve for the third. Okay, I made this a little bit smaller and just so we could see all the steps in front of us. Now, in step four, now that we know what y is equal to, you're going to go back to either equation d or e. It doesn't matter. Think about it. If we know what y is equal to, can't we substitute it into equation d and solve for x? Or in equation E, right? If we know what Y is equal to, can't we substitute it in for Y here and solve for X? Okay, so pick either one of those two equations. I'm just going to pick D and substitute the 2 in for Y. So instead of 3X plus 7Y equals 17, we'll have 3X plus 7 times 2 equals 17. Okay, again, so we took what y is equal to, and we just substituted it in for y. You could do it into either equation d or e, because then the only other variable that are, that's in those equations is an x, so we can now solve for x. So I wrote 3x plus 7 times 2 equals 17. <clears throat> so now we're just going to solve for x. Okay, so since 7 times 2 is 14, we have 3x plus 14 equals... 17. And then I'm just going to subtract 14 from both sides of the equation, leaving me with 3x equals 3. And now when I divide by 3, look at this. I was able to get x by itself, so I have x equals 1. All right, we're almost there. So, so far we have, I'm going to make an answer box over here. We have x equals 1, we have y equals 2, and the only thing left, left to solve for is our z. All right, so let's do it. Now let's think about it. If we know x and we know y, you could go back to any one of these original equations and plug in 1 for x, 2 for y, and solve for z. Now I personally think c is the easiest equation to solve for z, and just because it's positive, but you could choose any one of them. You'll get the same answer either way. All right, so I'm going to use, let me write out step 5. This is my last and final step. Step 5. All right, I'm using equation C. So now equation C says x plus 4y. So in place of the x, I'm going to substitute that with a 1. So I have 1 plus, and then it says 4y. So in place of the y, we're going to plug in a 2. And then I'm just going to bring down the rest of the equation. It says plus z equals 12. All right, so now we can solve this equation for z. So we have 1 plus, well, 4 times 2 is 8. So we have 1 plus 8 plus z equals 12. All right, well, 1 plus 8 is just 9. So we have 9 plus z equals 12. And, the, and by the way, the reason I put these little marks in my z's is so that they don't look like 2's. Okay, and then to get the z by itself, let's just subtract 9 from both sides of the equation. All right, so when we do, these cancel, and it leaves us with z equals 3. So that's our third and final variable. So look at that. It went up being 1, 2, 3. x equals 1, y equals 2, and z equals 3. Now, these are long and... You know, they take a little bit of practice, but once you practice them, it's really kind of the same process over and over again. So the more of these you do, the easier they become.